Welcome back and thanks for, for staying with us. Let's uh, continue to this now. African Christian Democratic Party leader, Reverend Kenneth Meshwe, says his uh, party will review the parole system and deny bail to those accused of murder and rape if it is elected to lead the country on May 29. He was speaking at the ACDP's elections manifesto launch in Johannesburg earlier this month. Now, Reverend Meshwe says the party will further introduce a biblical law that will see those who falsely accuse others of crimes such as rape serve time behind bars. We continue to highlight various party manifestos as South Africa heads to the 29th May election day draws near. Today, we speak to the ACDP's Reverend Kenneth Meshwe. Reverend, thank you so much for your time and good afternoon to you. So how was, you know, the election manifesto that you recently you know, launched in Johannesburg. First, let's start there. Thank you very much, Nati, for having me with you this afternoon and good afternoon to all the listeners mm -hmm. and viewers at home. Our election manifesto launch was very well uh, received, attended. So in short, it was excellent. And some of the journalists that have the liberty said, well done, you did well today. So we are grateful that we had a good one. So you centered uh, essentially your manifesto around the, the slogan SOS and, and that of course talks to service, order and safety. I want you to unpack that, um, particularly as we start to look at just some of your key priorities in there. I would imagine this is what service speaks to is job creation as well as poverty alleviation. I mean, you are supporting the open market economy. Just talk to us about just some of you know, the priorities and how you'll achieve this. We talk about service because we know people are, even today, protesting in deep blue. And in uh, Durban, uh, it is filthy, it is dirty, uh, there's garbage all over because people are unhappy with lack of services. And the ACDP is saying we are here to serve you, South Africans, who want proper service because we respect your rights to have proper service. And then we say order. The O is for order. We want order in society. One of the sad things to see in many townships, particularly in Fosteras where I work, is that the uh, street lights are gone. Okay, they are cut off. Uh, they are lying on the ground. It is dark. People's safety is compromised because there are no lights at night and uh, there are no repercussions. Those who do that continue doing that. It's not improving, it's increasing. It's like the police and the authorities are saying there is nothing we can do about that. And we are saying those who feel that they have run out of ideas must give space to those who have fresh ideas like the ACDP. And then the last, as we speak about uh, security, it is not right for anybody, particularly women and children, to live in fear in the country of their birth. Mm -hmm. We believe that the first responsibility of every government, any government on earth worth its salt, is to ensure the security of its citizens. If government fails to secure the security of its members, then it has failed drastically. All other things they try are not going to work. All right, so let's go back to what I said in our introduction. Of course, as we know, um, as uh, you know, ACDP, you currently hold four seats in the National Assembly. In the event that you are elected, you know, to lead the country on May 29 this year, you want to review the parole system and you want to deny bail to those that have been accused for serious crime including murder and rape. I mean, how will this work? Uh, some have criticized that this is not feasible. Well, it is. It is. When a judge imposes a sentence on anybody, he does that after satisfying himself, basing his satisfaction on the facts on the table. All right. So he says, according to the crime that has been committed, this is a sentence that is proportional. And so if a, a, a judge says 50 years, it, 50 years has to be 50 years. And if officials in prison can say, no, this person's behavior has improved, let's release him earlier, it doesn't make sense to me. Why? Because many times people are released because the conditions where they committed the crimes are not non-existent. For example, if a person is arrested for raping a child, you are in prison, you have men around you, there's no child. How can you prove to the public that your, the service or the improvement 
is visible of the person that has been arrested. So we say parole must be scrapped and people are saying, but what about overcrowding? We say if people start fearing the hand or the punishment from government, they will not commit the crimes. People commit crimes, even those who are released on parole, they repeat offense and they go back. Why? Because they're not fearing. We want drastic measures to be taken against those who are committing crimes, harsher punishment to be imposed so that people will fear the arm of the law. When people don't fear, they'll commit any crime they want to any time. They will not respect the rights of anybody, and yet they will expect their rights to be respected, and ACDP says that must come to an end. Now you also have the issue of, of rape. Now, when a person has raped and they want bail, why? Because many of them Facts prove many of them go out in the streets and they point at the victims. Zogtol and Zogtol, I'll find you, I'll find you, I'll get back, you know? So, and then the people who have laid charges then are traumatized for the second time when they see the person who violated them walking in the streets freely. So we are saying when a person is arrested for, arrested for something as serious as rape, that person must be denied bail. They must be there and obviously ensure that they wait for their sentence and at the expense, it must be at the expense of the family, not at the expense of taxpayers. That's the other change that we want as the ACDP. So to give people who have committed crimes bail, because they want bail, we say that must be brought to an end. The ACDP, of course, is 30 years um, you know, old. Uh, we are celebrating 30 years of democracy in the country ourselves. And just today, in fact, a conference on human rights um, is being held over mm -hmm. the next uh, three days. Now, when it comes to human rights, um, what are your views on that, particularly in South Africa? I mean, uh, you know, your party, of course, a, a lot of those that are questioning some of your fundamental beliefs, for instance, you um, have strong biblical foundation. Mm -hmm. um, some are saying that, is it inclusive enough? When, you know, you look at some of um, the um, key priorities that you have, and we'll discuss that a little bit later on, in terms of your manifesto, is that it's not all encompassing. And it may not necessarily um, honor, you know, the freedoms in which um, the Constitution, you know, does have uh, to most South Africans in the country. Sometimes I wonder on what people who think like that base their fears and their concerns. For people to say it is not feasible, it is not possible, they must give an ACDP an opportunity to prove to them that it definitely is feasible. Um, we have defended and we defend the rights of individual South Africans even in areas where other political parties are quiet. And a classic example is during vaccine. Okay, in the 20, uh, 2020, 2021, the president of South Africa in parliament said, uh, people, everybody have to be vaccinated, all right? And we stood up as the ACDP, we said, no, 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 that, that's wrong. You cannot force people against their rights because everybody has an individual right. So if people want the vaccine, it must be their right to say, I want it. And if people say, don't want it, nobody must force them because God himself does not force anybody to be saved. No, God doesn't force anybody to do what is expected of them. So government also does not have that right. We defended some people in court. We defended some who were being expelled from work and if even from school, okay? People we did not know, people who did not belong to the ACDP just because we were defending their individual rights. And just talk to us then about, you know, just some of uh, the beliefs that are, um, you know, included within this um, current manifesto. And, and I mean, these are some that we've seen already even um, in 2019 and 2014, for instance, uh, just talking about views on access to contraceptives as an example and abortion for young girls without parental consent. And you've spoken now about the COVID-19 vaccines, uh, just comprehensive sexual education as well. And the gender ideology that uh, you also maintain, those are just some of those issues where people are saying, but you are not recognizing the diversity of this country. Um, and therefore not um, being as inclusive um, as you possibly can, particularly as you try and woo um, certain votes, uh, certain voters in the country. Okay, we want everybody to enjoy their rights, okay? When children have rights, parents also should have rights, okay? As ACDP believe, education begins at home with their parents. Children must never be owned by the state. 
but they must be owned by the parents. So when the state wants to undermine the authority of the parents, that's what leads to what they call moral degeneration. The same government, the same state complains about moral degeneration. How did that happen? They cause parents to be handicapped, they take the authority of the parents, and they cause children just to do anything they want, anytime they want. So ACDP says, parents have rights, that must be acknowledged, as children have rights. Okay, then when it comes to diversity, ACDP has never said, like other countries, those who are different from us uh, must be put in a corner, they must be removed from society. We have never said that. Mm -hmm. Some people like what I'm going to say now. Do you know that my favorite tailor is gay? Okay, he's gay. I acknowledge his giftings, I like it, he's one of the best, I respect him, he respects me. When we meet, we shake hands, we embrace, and nothing comes, no disease comes on me, or what is in me doesn't go. Why? Because I respect every individual. They have rights, and as long as they respect mine, I also respect theirs. All right, so you have a place for him. In, Definitely. In, in um, you know, a, a country that is then led by the ACD. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, let's continue to this now. Uh, one of the things that is playing out in the Middle East, of course, they are concerned that, you know, locally this has affected how political parties have been standing, you know, to, to say, you know, we support uh, Israel, we support Palestine. Palestine has, of course, uh, Palestinians that are in South Africa particularly, have called for you to condemn what is currently happening um, in, in Gaza, for instance, where at the moment we're sitting at around 30,000 Palestinians who have been killed, um, and this as a result of Israel's continuous bombardment of Gaza following the Hamas attack on October 7. What does it take for, for your party to acknowledge that and, and condemn you know, countries like Israel and, and those that are also supporting Israel um, in this war? Well, there is no need to condemn a country because it is not a country that is doing what's happening in Gaza, all right? It can be soldiers and representatives of that country, but we cannot paint everybody with the same brush. But here is the point. People must ask the question, how did the war start? How did it start? And how can we bring it to an end? I have said in Parliament, and I'm repeating it today, that if the South African Parliament wanted to stop the war in Gaza, they can do it. You may ask why. If the international community wants to stop the war in Gaza, they can do it. You ask me how? Three simple things. Unati, three simple things. Number one, I acknowledge that when the IDF went there, they said, we want to rescue hostages. Why is the world not shouting and Hamas and say, release those hostages? You want the hostages? Release those people, release those people. They are not saying that, they are quiet about it, okay? So South the Africa issue was of, not quiet about it. Well, South Africa, uh, well, just to be politically correct, you know, sometimes you make a statement just in passing, and that's what they have done. If you measure and count the many times they have made the statement, release hostages, and also condemning uh, Israel, you cannot compare the two. Okay, that's the first thing, release hostages. Number two, the tunnels, you and our unity will never agree or like to have somebody living under our basements or under our houses, okay? If somebody digs a hole. Uh, digs a tunnel under your house, under my house. Nobody in the SABC would be happy about that. Nobody in South Africa would be happy about that. So I'm saying, and ACDP is saying, the second thing that must be done, those tunnels must be closed because they are being used to infiltrate, they are being used to attack Israel. So let them be closed. And the third one, okay, the Hamas and the Palestinians must accept the right of Israel to exist. Okay? They don't want to accept that. Now, you and I know it will not be easy for you to sleep well at night knowing that the person next door next door is saying if they get an opportunity they are going to kill you we don't want to be surrounded by people like that and yet the world is not taking hamas to task about this allow these people to exist mm. because once they know they're, they're, israel knows they're allowed to exist Perhaps let me say this point, Reverend Meshwe, because um, I mean a lot of South Africans are finding it very hard because uh, you, you stand by your biblical principles, you are a man of God and what they are seeing and what the international world is now starting to also call against is the genocide. 
that they say is happening in, in Israel. So do you um, also appreciate that, first of all, the war did not start on the 7th of October um, 2023, and also that, um, you know, um, the fact that, you know, you have 30,000 uh, 30, people that have been killed um, in, in, Palestine, in, in Gaza, and most of, the, of these women and children. So, um, you know, at, this, at the same time, you want people to call out Hamas. Um, it is also incumbent of yourself to, to see that these are innocent people that are being killed. I agree 100% with you about the innocent people that are being killed. It is heartbreaking. Mm. It is regrettable. I feel the pain myself, okay? But here's the issue again. It is a known fact that Hamas uses women and children as human shields. I've said publicly, okay, if men want to fight, we say, there used to be a saying, be a man, come out if you want to fight, let's fight. But to hide behind women and children is part of the crime that's being committed that people are not talking about, okay? Killing innocent people is always unfortunate, and if it's deliberate, it must be condemned. I agree. But women who are being used as human shields, how will they escape that? Children who are being used as human shields, how will they escape that? Unfortunately, they are going to be killed with the, peop the pe very people who are hiding behind them. When you target those who are hiding behind them and they are in front, unfortunately, they are going to be killed. And for, it's very sad. It's unfortunate. But let the international community address Hamas. Stop using women and children as you mentioned. All right, let's leave it there then. Uh, let's continue to another uh, priority that you've also, you know, touched on, uh, you know, during your manifesto, and that is, of course, uh, immigration um, in, in this country. What is your position then when it comes to migrants? Legal migrants must be welcomed. But illegal ones should not be welcomed. Government is irresponsible for allowing borders to be porous. They are being irresponsible to allow criminals to come from all over the world into South Africa. Because when a crime is committed, I was robbed myself in December, okay? Now, when the police give feedback, they tell you, we can't trace these fingerprints. It means it's illegal immigrants who did whatever they did to you. So why does government allow illegal immigrants in the country? Because they are causing problems, they are committing crimes, and they cannot be traced, and they cannot be arrested. But those who came in legally, we need many of their expertise, okay? If we can talk about our university, what used to be called the black university mainly, the majority of scientists, where do they come from? From Zimbabwe not from South Africa, from Zimbabwe. Why? Because those people are well learned. Now, we cannot say keep out all immigrants or keep out all people, even though there, some of them may have come into the country legally. Those who are in the country legally, we thank them for investing in the education, particularly of our children. We thank them for that. On the issue, again, I, don't, I think we touched a little bit about that, but your position on especially, you know, um, the rule of law uh, in this country, I want us to touch a little bit about what we're currently seeing in state-owned um, state enterprises, as an example, so um, speak a little bit about corruption, and what we also heard, of course, in terms of state capture. Where is your position as a party in as far as the rule of law is concerned? I mean, one of the reasons uh, that this is, um, is always asked, uh, you know, when it comes to political parties is in terms of the capacity in which, you know, political parties can then, um, you know, stop malfeasance and the, the scale of corruption that we are seeing in the country. The rot stats starts in the head. If the head does not want corruption, he must live a life that clearly states that I am living above corruption. I am accountable for my actions. I can account for everything and every dollar that is in my pocket and every dollar that is on my farm or in my house. All right? State capture will never be won. It will never be over, overcome until those who are involved in state capture those who are involved in malfeasance, 
are paying the price for their crimes. Unfortunately, we can talk about ministers who were mentioned in the state capture report. Ministers who have stolen money even from the poor. Nothing is happening to them. In some cases, unfortunately, it's officials on the ground who are scapegoats, who are punished. But the main people who are instigators, ministers, are not hushed. And until that happens, we are not going to win the fight over state capture and corruption. And the ACDP says, all those who are mentioned in the report, uh, state capture report, they must be arrested, they must account, and they have been out there and making more money for far too long. It's time that they can to go behind bars and be made to pay all the money they've stolen. One of the concerns, particularly, um, you know, what South Africans are also dealing with is the realization that um, we may have a coalition government, you know, post uh, May 29. Um, you are part of the multi-party charter. Uh, just talk to us about uh, the importance then of parties coming together, but making sure that even though they have their differences, services, everything that we've discussed, you know, this afternoon will be maintained and will be upheld. I mean, people, and you've touched on this uh, during your manifesto, people are concerned about the, um, the crisis that we are currently seeing with our economy with our um, you know electricity um, now of course we are dealing with a water crisis um, just how effective will coalition government be in this country um, you know post uh, this crucial election that we're going to one good thing that the multi-party charter is doing is that we are setting a framework uh, and regulations that will regulate all the parties that are working together agreements are being made even before elections even before results are announced so that those who will come together to form a government will be knowing we have agreed to do one two three and not to do one two three and when agreements are made beforehand it makes it easier it makes it easier for those parties to work together to produce services and render services that are expected but when it is a matter of it's a um, it's an emergency. I don't know you well, but please come, let's work together. It will not work. You did not have time to plan and to prepare who is best qualified for this, who is going to do one, two, three. But what the multi-party charter is doing, I believe it's setting a trend for the future. That those parties who have agreed, we will see them being able to work together for the betterment of South African society and providing of services to all those who deserve the services. Do you think um, enough has been done, particularly for parties like yourself, to draw young people to vote? I mean, uh, at the moment, we have about 27 point something million South Africans who are registered to vote out of a potential 40 million plus. Um, we still don't have that 14 million youth that uh, could have voted, you know. Um, do you think there is something that is preventing them to vote? And, and what can parties like yourself say to those young people well, for them to vote? The unfortunate thing is that many of them have been lied to too many times. They are saying we have no assurance that with the current situation in our country that we that are university graduates cannot find jobs so we were promised free education we were promised job jobs for all and this that's not happening after 30 years of being lied to the are the honest ones who say i cannot turn around within 24 hours because i've been lied to for 30 years but there are others who are saying, okay, now we see new people on the, on the, on the plain, plain field, on the field, all right? We are willing to take that a risk and give them a chance. As long as you have not learned the bad manners, you have not learned how to lie from the incumbent who has been causing us to suffer the way we are suffering now. So I believe we have made inroads. It's not enough, but we, we have made some inroads. The next elections, I'm sure, will be much better uh, we'll see more young people participating because they will see the difference that they sh their votes would have made between 2014 and 2019. 
they will realize it is because of their votes that there is a change, there's an improvement. So it has been difficult, I must say, but there are people who are saying, some of them are saying, I'm willing to try it one more time, and I'm sure they won't be disappointed. Reverend Mishwe, 30 seconds just to one final message to those that are considering voting for the ACDP. Our message, central message is SOS. Okay, we have heard what South Africans are saying. We have heard what South Africans want. We want to ensure that you get proper service delivery because we respect you. We want to restore order, law and order in South Africa. We don't want to see street lights being and in infrastructure in general being destroyed with no repercussions and also want to ensure that you and your children are safe. If you want to have a stroll in the evening, uh, you are a mother with your children, we want you to enjoy that without fearing that some Tom will arrive from whatever and molest you, attack you, rob you and so on. We want to ensure that everybody enjoys this beautiful country that we have. Right, uh, Reverend Mishra, thank you so much uh, for your time on the show. Really appreciate it. And of course, uh, good luck for those. Thank you very much, Nati. All right, uh, of course, uh, that was the ACDP um, leader, uh, the Reverend uh, Kenneth Mishra, saying that all South Africans should vote for them because they are offering service, order, and a safety. Of course, those were the SOS values for the manifesto launch that happened earlier this month.